Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be looking at this Gaussian integral here. I'm going to be solving it in two different ways. Firstly, the classic way, and secondly, a way which perhaps you've not seen before. Let's get stuck right in. So this is the integral, the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx. Now, x here is a dummy variable, so I can replace it with y, and that doesn't change its value. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is multiply both sides. So on the left-hand side, when I multiply both sides, or both lines, sorry, I get i squared. And then when I multiply these two integrals together, I get the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx multiplied by the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative y squared dy. Now, this here is a number. In fact, it's i. So I can bring this inside this integral here. In the same way, 3 times the integral of f of x is the same as the integral of 3 times f of x. Okay, so let me just do that here. So this integral here is this y integral. I'm bringing this inside, so I get the integral. This is this integral here. Running out space here. And then the e to the negative y squared dy. Hopefully you can all see that. Perfect. <laughs> Right, and the same reason here, I can bring this e to the negative y squared into this integral here. This thing here is a function of y, but importantly, it's independent of x, which means I can bring it into this integral here, so I can just bring this dx up here. Okay, and one thing here, I can clean this up and bring the two exponents together, and using basic exponent rules, that negative x squared and negative y squared join together, and I can write this as so. Okay, and now here's the sort of trick to this method, it's converting into polar coordinates. So this thing here is equal to, and I'm just going to, not write in the limits just yet, I'll get e to the negative r squared, because in polar coordinates x squared plus y squared equals r squared, and then I get a dr d theta, but when you do a change of uh, variables from the xy uh, coordinate system to r theta, the polar coordinate system, you in, you get an extra r coming up there. <clears throat> if you're not familiar with this, it's basically the same reason when you're doing a u substitution, you have the little sort of derivative uh, function coming in, and in this case it's r, but it's not the exact same thing because we're working in sort of two variables, x and y, r and theta. Um, but yeah, it's, this is what's known as the Jacobian. Uh, but I won't go into it right now. Now the limits. So here we're going over the whole xy plane, so we have to do the same thing here, go over the whole plane. So r must be going from 0 to infinity, so we're considering vectors of all lengths, and then theta is going from 0 to 2 pi, all directions. Okay, now what's quite nice here, there's no theta involved at all, so this is just a constant, so I can ignore this integral and just shove a 2 pi at the front. Now this integral here is quite straightforward to compute, it's 2 pi. Now this thing here is an exact derivative of this thing here, when I differentiate this, I get a minus 2r here, the minus 2 and the minus half cancel, so I've got r e to the negative r squared, which is exactly what I have there. And then from infinity to 0, when I put in infinity, this thing here goes to 0, and when I put in 0, this thing here is a minus half, so I get this is equal to 2 pi, 0 minus, minus a half, and that is pi, which is quite nice, you get pi coming out of this integral here, but it doesn't seem that there's any sort of trigonometry involved, and you've got an e in there. It's quite nice, but we're not just done yet. We have i squared equals pi. We don't want i squared, we want i. So i equals plus or minus root pi. But because we know that i here, to go back to what we defined it to be, it's the integral of a non-negative function, then its integral must be non-negative, so we take the positive root. And we're done. So this integral here equals root pi, which is quite nice. That's the classic way. Now let me get on to a way which perhaps you've not seen before. Let me just drop this out. <coughs> okay. Now, we have this integral here. It's over a symmetric domain, and this function here is even, which means it's symmetric about uh, the, the y-axis. When I put in minus x here, I get the same function. Um, so this integral here, I can actually get rid of the bottom limit and put a zero there, just for perhaps a visual argument of that. If you look at this sketch of this function, it looks something like that. Oh. It's supposed to be symmetric about the y-axis. Uh, this is e to the negative x squared. We want to know 
this is our eye, the area underneath this curve, but because of symmetry, that's just the area here times 2, which is exactly what this integral times 2 means. Okay? So now we're going to try and work out what this integral here is, and we're going to do that by considering this function here. f of x, y equals y e to the negative y squared, 1 plus x squared. A very rogue looking function indeed, but it uh, will prove its worth in just a second. Okay, so I want to do this integral here, and I'm going to look in the positive quadrant, i.e. x comma y are between 0 and infinity. Okay, so... I want to know the integral from 0 to infinity of f of x, y, and I'm going to go dy dx first. Okay, let's go, we're going to call this integral here j. Okay, so to work out j, firstly, I'm going to work out without the dx first. Okay, so this integral here is the integral from 0 to infinity, f of xy, of y e to the negative y squared, 1 plus x squared dy. Now to evaluate this, I'm going to do a u substitution, let u equal the square root of this thing here, so that we get an e to the negative u squared. Okay, so let u equal y square root of 1 plus x squared. Okay, well what does that mean? That means that du is equal to 1 square root of 1 plus x squared dy. So this thing here is equal to the integral. When y is not here, we have that u is not. And when y is infinity, we again we have u is infinity. And y... Um, is u over square root of 1 plus x squared and then we get e to the negative u squared and then our dy becomes du over root 1 plus x squared okay and then this thing here quite nicely we can take out both of these because these are constants with respect to u so this is root, uh, 1 over the square root of that uh, 1 over 1 plus x squared times the integral from 0 to infinity of u e to the negative u squared du and if you remember we actually calculated this in the last line in the in the previous proof this thing here equals a half so this thing here in total equals a half 1 plus x squared okay so that is just the integral of this thing here dy so let me just rub off rub out all this working and pop that here Okay, now, we wanted to work out what j is, and j is the integral of f of x, uh, y, dy, dx. Okay, so it's this integral here. But we just computed this inner integral here, it's this function here, oh, my whiteboard's falling. <laughs> um, so this thing here is the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over 2, 1 plus x squared dx. Okay, we can bring the half out, and then this thing here is the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared, which is inverse tangent x. So we can write this as 1 over 2 inverse tangent of x. And that's from infinity to 0. Of, of course, when I put an infinity in there, I get pi over 2. When I put 0 in there, I get 0. So this thing is just pi over 4. Okay, so we've shown that j equals pi over 4. So, you might be wondering where on earth this is going, but let's just put this here. So j, which remember is our double integral, 0 to infinity, 0 to infinity, of f of x, y, dy, dx, we've just shown that equals pi over 4. But we don't want to know what j is, we want to know what i is, and how we're going to do that is we're going to do something very cheeky, and it's to swap these, uh, the order of integration. Now, to, to make this a valid claim and to do this properly and to make sure that this is a justifiable move, we have to know something called Fubini's theorem or, or Tonelli's theorem or theorems like that. I'm not going to go into it too, too much now, but just assume that you can swap the integrals. Now, obviously, if these were finite, i.e. I was going to, from 0 to 7, and 0 to 7, <coughs> that would be completely fine. Uh, but it's not necessarily the case always that you can, when you've got an infinite domain of integration 
but it does actually work. And if you do know Fubini's internet theorem, I encourage you to just check that this is okay. But I'm just going to swap the order of integration. So because the notes are the same, that's just the same integral, but dx dy. <coughs> now, let's work this out. Let's do this integral first. The integral from naught to infinity of f of xy dx. Well, that's the integral from naught to infinity of this thing here. Okay, we can bring the y out because uh, y is independent of x. And similarly, this thing here, by exponent rules, is going to be e to the negative y squared times e to the negative y squared x squared. This again is a function independent of x. I can bring that out. So this thing here is equal to y e to the negative y squared, the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x squared y squared dx. Okay, now to evaluate this integral here, I'm going to do another u substitution, again to make this thing here uh, u, so, or u squared, sorry. Let u be equal xy, well, that implies that du is equal to y dx. So this integral here becomes the integral of y, or e, ah, this here equals y e to the negative y squared, integral, uh, when x is naught, u is naught, x is infinity, u is infinity because y is positive, or non-negative. Okay, and e to the negative x, y, x squared y squared becomes e to the negative u squared, and then dx becomes du over y. I can bring this y out, and it cancels nicely with this y. So I'm left with just the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative u squared du. But what's quite nice about this is this is exactly i over 2 from earlier. Okay, so this thing here equals e to the negative y squared times i over 2. Because remember that x is just a dummy variable, so uh, those two things are exactly the same. Whew, almost there. So we've shown that j, oh sorry, the integral from 0 to infinity of f of x dx, uh, f of x y dx is e to the negative y squared i over 2. And perhaps you can see where we're going with this. Times i over 2. Okay, but we want to know j, and remember, we're swapping the order of integration, so this thing here is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity. Now, we just worked out this thing here. It's e to the negative y squared times i over 2 dy, dy from there. Now, we can bring the i over 2 out. It's, that's a constant. And again, this thing here is whiteboard almost fell again, is the exact same thing as i over 2 from the beginning. So this thing here equals i squared over 4. So we've shown that j equals i squared over 4, but remember from before we showed that j equals pi over 4. And again, we get i squared equals pi, and for the same argument that i must be non-negative, we conclude that i is the square root of pi. So we've shown it in two different ways, shown that this Gaussian integral here, or we started with i being this thing here, doesn't really matter, equals the square root of pi. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, I've shown it in two different ways. Uh, if you did enjoy, please do subscribe, it helps me out a lot, and uh, lets me know if you enjoy these sorts of videos. Um, and yeah, that's, me. that's it for now. Have a great day. See you.